And welcome again to the big match. And as the teams come out for a rousing London derby game between Crystal Palace and Arsenal, it's probably the most controversial match of the whole season. In it, there's a penalty incident that had everybody arguing, and with the help of a camera behind the goal, we'll hope to clear up things during Jimmy Hill's analysis spot later in the programme. Also, Liverpool, the first division leaders against Stoke City, that's a match decided with a goal in injury time. We take a good slice of that one. And a few snippets from our bonus match, which is Sheffield United against Everton. So, some great action again today, and we start back at Selhurst Park in the bright sunshine with referee Harry New of Bristol waiting for the arrival of the captains for the toss-up. First, it was Crystal Palace's Mel Blythe, skipper for the first time, and then Frank McClintock. Palace hard hit by injuries here. Fullback Paddy Mulligan is out, so too is goalkeeper John Jackson. 19 year old Paul Hammond comes into goal, his second game, and Bobby Tambling continues in the attack. Uh, it's the side that finished with a 1 1 draw at Wolverhampton last week that at last has given everybody at the club a glimmer of hope for the future. And Palace's confidence will need to be high for the visit of Arsenal. And Frank McClintock has brought with him a side that is missing Alan Ball, who's just started a suspension. In his place is Eddie Kelly, his first game in the first team for eight months. New faces abound here. Among them for Crystal Palace, Ian Phillip, a defender and midfield man bought from Dundee. And of course, Charlie Cook, after several seasons at nearby Chelsea. Arsenal too have been in the market. Jeff Blockley is their man. £200,000 from Coventry City, now an England cap. And as I say, it's the return of Eddie Kelly to Arsenal's midfield. The crowd seem to be coming back to football. This one of 35,000 now waits for the start. So it's down to Harry Newell, the referee from Bristol. So Crystal Palace then kick off. Defending the goal to our right in that white strip with the maroon and light blue stripe. Arsenal this afternoon in their second strip of yellow shirts with blue shorts. Long ball forward there, Charlie George, it went over McCormick's head. Rice to Kelly. Charlie George flicked on there nicely for Eddie Kelly, and Kelly might get a chance here as the Palace defence was stumbling for a moment. Mel Blythe to Tony Taylor, and Blythe again. George Graham, beaten by Tambling, and it's this sort of hustling that Crystal Palace have got to look for this afternoon to try and hustle Arsenal out of their stride. Payne, Tambling's going on. Rice. Graham again. Rice. Charlie George going for it, that was his header. Oh, and there was a misunderstanding there. Radford has got time to tee it up. And a handball, and he could do nothing else by Hinshelwood on the line, and that's going to be a penalty. But that was a misunderstanding in the defence when the goalkeeper was coming for it, and Radford had time to choose his spot, and Hinshelwood had to handle that off the line. And I think Harry New was quite right not to book him for deliberately handling. The punishment surely is enough, but Arsenal get the penalty. The referee just going there to make sure that Paul Hammond stays on the line. Must not move before the kick is taken. And it's Charlie George who's going to take it. Are Arsenal going ahead? No! No! Yes, the goal has been given. That must have fractionally cost the line. That must have fractionally cost the line. The whole of the ball must be across the line. Harry knew the referee looked at his linesman. And the linesman had his flag pointing towards the middle. And so Paul Hammond in that Crystal Palace goal, who looked as though he'd somehow kept it out after the ball had hit the post, couldn't stop Charlie George from being forced into that uh, situation by the running of David Payne. And the crowd now beginning to build up again behind Crystal Palace. Hamlin looks as though he might try an in-swinger with that left foot. Lies right in there, Craven in there, and a goal! John Craven has got to be credited with it, but it's the equaliser. 1-1. One, one. So John Craven makes it 1-1. One, one. And now the crowd really beginning to go. Marinello for Arsenal.
unlucky performance of Crystal Palace. Cook to Pinkney. Still with Alan Pinkney, and then a nice little back heel by George Graham allowing Blockley to get it away. But not a particularly good clearance again, it only goes as far as Blythe. Tambling in. Oh, a nice little chance here now for Craven, and he's done it! 2 2! 2 2! John Craven, his second goal. Flicked on very nicely for him, and Tambling had a big part in it, and he'll feel better for that. Leaving Craven the chance to plant it wide of Jeff Barnett, and 2 2 is the score. So it really now becomes quite a derby game as Radford takes another long throw. Out as far as Kelly. And now for McNabb. Turned in again. And Rice. Yes! Pat Rice! Palace thought he was offside. And they're going to hound the referee. They are arguing with the referee. And they're persuading him to go and have a word with the linesman. And it's a good goal. Pat Rice's goal counts. And so it becomes 3-2. So twice in this... Magnificent second half, we've had Crystal Palace clawing their way magnificently back into the game. And that's the end of a very fine second half in the Derby game, which brings a victory for Arsenal in spite of two goals for Crystal Palace by John Craven, who fought so hard. Charlie George with a penalty that set Arsenal on their way. John Radford added a second one after that bad back pass, and Pat Rice scored the winner for Arsenal and so a game, a derby game that took some time to get into its stride really provided a lot of entertainment in the second half and a final score line at Selhurst Park that reads Crystal Palace 2, Arsenal 3